Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can create a neon title effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. First, I'm going to start by dragging a clip from my media pool into the timeline to serve as the background for my title sequence. So I'll just take that and put it right in there. And then you have either the option of creating a title from scratch using the Fusion Composition, which you can find in the Effects Library under Toolbox and then Effects, or we can start with a template fusion title and go ahead and edit from there. Since I really haven't shown editing a fusion title that's already pre-existing much before, I'll go ahead and show you how to take an existing title and edit it into the neon effect. So under fusion titles, I'm going to go down and find one I like. In this case, I'm a pretty big fan of the title three line drops. So I'm going to take this and put it into the timeline. So if we hit play now, we have our default title. You can see that it has three layers of text at different colors, doesn't really have a neon font. So first let's deal with the extremely vibrant background. One way that we can make the background less stand out is to lower its opacity down to darken it, but I have an even better idea. So we'll go into toolbox and open effects and scroll down to resolve effects, stylize and add a vignette to our main video clip. So to add the vignette effect to our main video clip, we need to just drag it and drop it onto the video track one where we have that clip. You'll notice that a default vignette gets put on there. The corners of our preview should look darker, as the vignette effect takes everything out of the center and darkens it more and more as it gets to the edge of our video. So if we want to change that vignette effect, we can go over to the Open Effects tab of the Inspector. For our purposes here, leaving Operating Mode as basic is probably fine, but if you need or want to mess around with more advanced settings, you can change it to Advanced Mode there. So let's go ahead and modify the size, the anamorphism, and the softness until we get a result that we like. So I was finding that lowering the size of the vignette, basically shrinking the size which will actually show through in the center there, and then increasing the softness, and increasing the anamorphism gave me a look that I was quite comfortable with. Depending on your base video clip, you may find that this is dark enough for you, or you may need to make the settings a little bit more dramatic. Note that you can always lower the opacity down a little bit in the main video clip if you need to. But for right now, we're going to leave this alone, change the font, and then add a neon glow effect. So if we click on our title, you'll notice that some of the fusion settings are exposed to us inside of the Edit tab inspectors. So we can change things like the font, or the text that is being written inside of each of the text boxes. But I'd like to show a little bit more in this video about how you would do that on the Fusion tab. So if we go over to the Fusion tab, that's the one in the middle there at the bottom, as long as we have the title clip selected, so in this case it was Video Track 2, then there should be a title group that you can edit from. In this case, Title 3 Line Drop, if we actually double click on that, you'll see that there was not one, but eight nodes in that group. So this is all of the stuff that is combined in order to create the base title effect. So the first thing that we're going to change on the Fusion tab for each of these text elements is going to be the font. So with top text selected as a node, we can see in the inspector that we have the ability to customize the font. So we want to change this to any font that we choose. So I have a few fonts that I've pulled up from defont.com that are completely free. Um, BP Neon. And then also the neon font, we're going to be using both of those in this video. So for the top element, I'm going to change it to BP Neon. And we can edit the text that it's going to display here. So in this place, I'll put Chris's tutorials here as the top line. We'll also click on the second text element. And in this case, we'll change the font from Open Sans to Neon. Note that that's a totally separate font from BP Neon up there. And we'll change the text from Center Headline to Neon Title Effect. And for the bottom line, we will change the text to DaVinci Resolve 16, and the font will be BP Neon. So one thing you'll probably notice here, if we uh, play back this effect as it is, is that because of changing the font, the text kind of overlaps with each other. So in this case, we're going to want the white text to move up a little bit and the blue text to move down a little bit. So if we take any of these effects and go over to the second tab here for layout, you'll see that there are forward and back arrows for keyframes for those text title effects. And that's how you actually get the movement where it fades in and slides out onto the screen for each of those effects. So we figured that's probably why they added these three transform offsets. So the three transform offset nodes, text, top text offset, transform two and transform three don't have keyframes. So we can actually modify the position there without worrying about accidentally adding another keyframe and throwing the whole animation off. So an offset is just to adjust everything across the board by a little bit of positioning. So in this case, with top text offset selected, 
I can either use these gizmos in order to move it up and to the right if I need to, or I can just, in the inspector, manually adjust those values. It's the same either way, it's just what you prefer. So I'm going to bump that up to about a 0 0.525, up from a 0 0.5 center. Uh, double click on that to expand it, and then I'm going to lower that down by a little bit. So now if I play the effect one more time, you'll see that the three text elements are offset properly from each other and it looks better because they're not overlapping. Okay, so next I want to add a glow effect in between our original title group and the media out. And we're also going to want to combine that glow effect with the original output so that it will output both a glow effect based on these nodes, but also the original title. So the title will show on top and then there'll be a glow effect behind it. So in order to do that, we need two more nodes. We're going to need to add another merge node, which allows you to combine different nodes into one. And then we need a glow node. So to add the merge node, we can right click, do add tool, and then in composite, we have merge. And then I'm gonna cut this connection here and make the merge the final connection to media out. And then we need to right click, go to add tool, and then blur and choose glow. And now we need to take our title animation and connect it to both Merge 3 and to Glow, and then Glow will feed into Merge 3. So the title animation to Merge, so that will get output as normal. But then we split that off into Glow, and then Glow feeds back into Merge. So by doing that, we get both effects in one. And if I bring up the original title animation on the left here, and then Media Out on the right, you can see the effect that this Glow adds, making it look a lot more like these neon letters are actually lit up. So with the glow node, we can adjust this glow to be as strong as we want it to be. So I was finding that the best filter to get the effect I was looking for was to change from fast Gaussian to blend. And then we can pump this glow way up to somewhere about 9.25 or 9.3 and adjust the glow size in order to get a nice vibrant glowing effect on all of our text characters. So let's see, uh, right around 25 for the glow size and 0.92 for the glow uh, seems to work pretty well. If we go back to the edit tab now and play it back, we can see that it looks pretty good overall, but it's still a little bright in the background. And that's just because the particular clip I was using was especially vivid. So at this point, we can either try to make the vignette more dramatic, or we could lower down the opacity just a tad so that it's darker in the background. So for the sake of readability for our neon title there, I'm going to lower this down a bit to uh, something like 70% opacity. And now we can play it back and make sure that the title is quite readable. That looks pretty good there. And one thing we can actually do if we want to have the clip keep playing after the title effect is done is to actually add a keyframe to the opacity. So with the clip selected at the point in time where we want to turn it back to 100% full opacity, basically, as in the original clip, we can hit the opacity button there, and then we can go to a new point in time after the title is done, add a new value for the opacity. Since we already set one keyframe, the second one will be added automatically as soon as we put in a new value. And now we can have the video fade back in after the title is done. So hitting play, the opacity kind of fades back in subtly. So likewise, we can actually do the same thing with the vignette effect, fading out the vignette effect and letting the video uh, look as it did in the original clip. So if we go to where the first keyframe was set for the opacity by hitting the left arrow with the main clip selected, uh, and we go over to open effects, we can set a keyframe for global blend. You can think of the global blend here as the percentage of fading out the effect. So if you have a 1.0 global blend, that means that nothing is going to see through and the effect is effectively going to be ignored. So now if we go to the video tab, hit next to get the keyframe for the opacity when it's 100%, and we turn the global blend from 0 to 100, you'll notice that at this point in time, the vignette effect is now not affecting the video in any way whatsoever. So now if we play back the fade, with both the vignette effect blend and the opacity returning to normal. And you'll get something like this, which is a nice way of fading back into your video. So playing it back from the beginning, that's the gist of how you get a simple neon text effect with glow inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So I hope you guys learned a few things about editing titles in the Fusion tab of Resolve 16. That's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.